We are back, Breeders' Cup Saturday. I'm Ernie Munich, this is the champ, Richard Migliori. And you, on television yesterday, were talking about how Todd Pletcher has a tendency to get hot, to flurry, and on, sometimes on big days, and sure enough, boom. Yeah, he had a big day, three wins, two Breeders' Cup wins. You know, and, and if you look into it, it feels like Todd really pointed he came here early, the horses have been working over the track, and Todd is definitely, as accomplished as he is, can be very streaky, and, and we've seen him, when he wins, he seems to win in bunches, and I think he's gonna have another good Breeders' Cup day on day two. Okay, Mig, let's do it. Day two, so we start off with the juvenile Phillies turf, excuse me, juvenile Phillies, yeah, and juvenile you like? Phillies, and I'm gonna go to Todd Pletcher. I, I like Ra Rachel Valentina. I thought the improvement from her mentally from her first race to her second race when she won the spin away was, was glaring. She looked a bit green first time, maybe not quite sure why she was there. She seemed much more clued in, much more in the bridle. Um, and I'm gonna go with Rachel's Valentina to upset Songbird, who I think is extremely talented and, and she is definitely the horse to beat. And if I like Rachel's Valentina, well, I'm gotta use Tap to it, who I thought ran extremely well and has trained extremely well up to this Breeders' Cup. Okay, I am on Songbird with that clean outside draw. I love the outside post, whether two turns or not. And as Mig said, the way Tap Two it ran, I'm not. My dad would say I'm not smart enough to separate them from the other horses. I can see those two finishing close together again. Mig, next, let's move on. Turf Sprint, and you know a little bit about this race. Well, I was fortunate enough to win the Turf Sprint, but that was at Santa Anita, yes. six and a half down the hill. This is a bit of a different race, five and a half furlongs, an eighth of a mile shorter and completely flat. Um, I'm going to go to Undrafted. I, I, I really like him. I think, um, you know, he, his race at Royal Ascot in the Diamond Jubilee was tremendous. He gets Frankie Vittori back, and I think five and a half is no problem for him. I think he'll handle a little cut in the ground, um, and I'm on undrafted. I'm going to give you a long shot underneath though. How about Joe Franklin? Joe Franklin I thought was super impressive at Belmont. My concern with him is that I don't know how he's going to handle this ground and if it was firm I'd like him even more but I'm going to go with Joe Franklin and then I'm going to go to the inside. Pure sensation for third. Christophe Comant needs to work out a trip but this is almost an impossible race. And what's so interesting to me is this gentleman, this, this right here, gave out in this tradition that we have at the Breeders' Cup and MIG selections with me. Bobby's kitten. He gave him out last year in this at a big price and you said, I think the words you used were, I know we have to move along, the words you used were, this distance will intensify his run, I think you said, and man, that was crazy. Well, some run. He was last on the crossover, but again, it's a different type of race. And Bobby's kit and a horse that tends to pull in longer races off the bridle coming down the hill makes a big difference. Mm. Five and a half on the flat, and I'm not sure he's found his form again this year. So that's why I'm going with undrafted. Okay, I am going with Mig. I am, have always crushed on City Zips. I love them so much. Now we see work all week. We see the Philly, day at the spa. We see yesterday the, the Cassie Philly, juvenile Philly. A sensational sire. I don't know if Ready for Rye is going to like this course. I don't know if he's fast enough, but I loved his last race. I thought it was almost like a training race. I'm with Re Ready for Rye, and I have, I'm using Undrafted as well. Philly and Mare Sprint. Yeah, just another, just such a competitive race. Um, La Verdad raided uh, a week ago in the uh, New York Showcase Day in the Iroquois. Um, I don't see her being able to do that in this spot. She's drawn towards the inside. Last time she was outside kickback. I think she's going to get hooked up with Stone Tastic, and I think they're going to hurt each other's chances. I think it sets up for Cavorting's late run. I like Cavorting, um, and I think she's got the right style to win this. Outside um, post. Outside post, not a problem for me. I think she gets into the race the right way. Um, Irad Ortiz has been riding terrific in New York. I think he's going to get another Breeders' Cup win here. Um, I think you can use a lot of horses underneath. I'm going to use uh, Taris, who was very, wow. very, very good at, at Keeneland um, mm. uh, when she ran here uh, a year ago. And uh, I think she got a little maybe too involved last time. I think she rates a little more into Gary Stevens. I think she runs big. Wavell Avenue has been training <laughs> lights out for Chad Brown. I think she's going to uh, have a say in at least the exotics. 
and I can't leave out Artemis Agriteris somewhere. Oh, uh, it's your boy. That's your boy. Michael Hushin is not a trainer that runs a horse in a spot like this unless he believes they can win. Him running her off the layoff in here tells me she's doing sensational. Okay. I am on a horse who might be incinerated by the ones you mentioned, Stone Tastic and, and the others. I'm going with Super Majesty, A, because I like to work. And also, I sometimes make, and even in general, when I think there are all these speed horses who are going to take each other out, the best speed wins. Maybe not, I, I mean, I'm thinking of a stalking, sensational, very subtle type performance. I'm hoping, and I know she would need to improve to win. Let's see if she can do it. Super Majesty, Judy the Beauty for me. I'm surprised you tossed Judy the Beauty here. Any, any, uh, I, I just not that sure good? That, that she's as good as she once was. And I, I think Wesley Ward probably has her as good as she's going to be. I'm just not sure she's back to what she once was. And there is a time in every horse's life where they start to slow down, much like people. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, Philly and Mare Turf. What a fun race this is, Mig. It, it is a tremendous <laughs> race. I, I, obviously, I can't get past uh, Legatissimo. I, I just think she's a standout. Uh, an extremely good horse coming here, a good, a good filly. Um, a three-year-old, I, I, I like her. I think she's the most likely winner. Um, I was super impressed with the Sita in, in Saratoga, her late kick. Um, but is she going to perform the same on ground with a little given it? That, that's my concern with the Sita. And um, I guess, how do you not use the old mare, Stephanie's Kitten? Um, she's shown the, the ability to run on, on softer ground. Um, I've got to use her, and Chad Brown's been so hot. So, Legatissimo, and I'd use a few others underneath her. Okay, I am using Dasita for the reasons you mentioned, Meg. The only reason I'm going to use Secret Gesture over Legatissimo is that she was close to Legatissimo. I don't know how the switch in, in, in surfaces and, and, and con, you know, in, in Europe to America is, is going to affect both of them. I'll get a much better price on Secret Gesture. No big concept or wise cre creativity about why I like her more. I just think the price will be better and I think they're close. So the Cita Secret Gesture, Legatissimo for me. The Sprint, oh my, they are fast, Meg. Maybe a sub 44 half. Uh, they are fast, and, and, and this is a great addition of the sprint. Um, run Happy and Private Zone, I think, are going to hurt each other's chances. Run Happy is fast. He doesn't always break well. If he doesn't break well here, there's the possibility of him getting shuffled back in the early going. How is he going to handle kickback if that happens? Uh, private Zone, don't think he's training quite as forwardly as he had through the summer months when he was really good. Um, so I'm going to look at, at, at some other options here and for me uh, those other options fall with wild dude who i think gets the right wow. uh, setup i think he's going to set up a late run for him as well as saluto amigo so i think he's wow. back into form wow and if i'm going to use a three-year-old here it's not going to be run happy it's going to be the horse that run happy beat up on in saratoga limousine liberal who i think huh. has made as good a physical impression here this week as anybody so that, that would be the three I'm going to use. Uh, Wild Dude, Saludo Amigo, and Limousine Liberal. I, I think my, well, not, boy, will that pay a ton. And by the way, did you hit your pick four yesterday? You might, I did not. What did you miss? I Because you I, singled I, Liam and you, you I, used. I did not use um, uh, Hit It The Bomb and Birchwood. I, uh, the outside post. Yep. yep. And, 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 oh. and what a ride he got from Ryan Moore. I think we should change his name to Moses, the way the red sheet <laughs> parted at the eighth pole. Right. Okay. Wow. Because I knew you were close. I wasn't sure. All right. Well, this sprint, I think my weakest opinion is in this race. I do think Run Happy is kind of freakish. And I just fear what you fear. It breaks slowly. He could get log jammed. And then it's a 20 and one rush up and adios. But I am going to use him. And I'm also going to use Big Mocker. Only on his, on his best. And here's a bomb I'm going to use. Just in case Barbados is, I know he looks way slow on paper, but his, all his sprints have been good. And he's going to be an enormous price. And he's got liable to get faster. So that's what I'm going to use in that race. The mile. Ferocious. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this Breeders' Cup, though, to me, uh, other than a few notable exceptions, just some of the absolutely most competitive races um, you're ever going to see. I've, I've got some crazy ideas here. I might use the Philly Tepid. I thought her race last time here was sensational. We've seen Phillies have success in this race before. 
She handles the kind of ground she's going to get. Mark Cassie broke through with a win yesterday. I'm, I'm going to use Teppin. To use the, a phrase that, you, that, that you've used through the years and that I've adopted from you, and of course, because of me, we're going way too long, but I'm enjoying it. I don't care. Um, how many A games can you bring? You are then are you're not contra, you're not contradicting the Migliori, but you would need a double A game to to, to, to no, win. Today. No doubt, but I felt like she may have won with a little something left, and I think at the price that you're going to get, it, it, it's the values there. So I'm going to take a shot. I mean, obviously a horse like Esoteric is going to be very tough. Uh, make believe these are proper horses, yeah. but. We're stating the obvious then. We're, we're trying to look past that a little bit. I mean, this is a tremendous race, but I'm going to use her. I'm going to use Taurus a little bit yeah. with the obvious horses. Okay. I am going to. I am going to Taurus, even though he might be too slow. And uh, I, can he work out a trip? As you well know, is better than anybody. The trip is key. I'm going to use, I feel stupid using Conti, going from 30 to 1 to 8 to 1 or 10 to 1, but I thought he looked, you know, real terrific this week. I may use Mondialisti. How do you pronounce that, Mig? Mon yeah, yeah, Mondialisti right. a little bit, too. I thought his race was maybe underrated in, at Woodbine. Those are my three. We're on to the juvenile, and I'm curious, because after last year, we both dug Daredevil. What do you do with the slop winner in from the Champagne now? Well, I think Greenpoint Crusader is a, is a proper horse. I don't think it was a slop that made him win last time. Um, I actually watched this horse train uh, quite a bit in Saratoga. I thought his first race, I, I liked him going into it. I thought the, the five and a half furlongs was too short for him, and he ran really well. I thought he won second time, seven eights, a little easier than the margin of victory would indicate, and he still hadn't figured it out. Well, I thought the light bulb went on, his champagne, he ran big, and he's trained really well since. A horse that didn't train um, without company very impressively before went 46 on his own. That tells me he's figured the game out. I would use. Greenpoint Crusader, Exaggerator, who I think was a short horse last time and is going to run big this time. I'm against Nyquist because I'm not sure he wants to go that far, and I don't like his post. Okay. I am crazy in this rate. A little bit, not embarrassed by my pick, but it's kind of a weak. I will use this horse lightly, but I'm going with an, 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 an outrageous long shot named Rated R Superstar. I just think he's underrated. I love his toughness. I know he might be six lengths slow. The race is going to have to fall apart, but I love that he's been tenacious on the lead. I love that he's been come from way back. I love the way he fought when he was beaten last time by Brody. He just kept giving, and uh, he's my bomb. I'm using Exaggerator as well, just for the reasons you mentioned. And I didn't know what to do with Greenpoint Crusader, though he's better bred for the distance than Daredevil. I'm, I'm gun-shy after last year because I thought Daredevil although a more than ready was still a really good horse D different style than, than Daredevil and Daredevil was actually more precocious than Green Crusader earlier in his career where I think this horse is developing more got it alright the turf John Gosden or not it's all about Golden Horn uh, it, it, this horse has just been sensational in Europe um, got to speak with Frankie DeTore yesterday uh, you know, this is a man that knows he's locked and loaded for this race. It, it's it's all about Golden Horn. Underneath? Uh, underneath, I think you can go a, a couple of different ways. How do you not use the pizza man? Yep. He always okay. seems to deliver. Yes. Um, I think Slumber actually ha, ha, has a bit of a chance there. And Twilight Eclipse was the best horse last time um, when he was beaten by Big Blue Kitten. So if you like Big Blue Kitten, you've got to look at Twilight Eclipse. All right. Just because it's me, I have to say that Slumber might be my sleeper. Um, the pizza man may get a slice. <laughs> what else do you expect from me? That's my deep analysis. All right, in the classic, let's do it, Mig. Um, it's all about American Pharaoh. The, the race plays into his style. He should gallop to the lead. The only horse I could see maybe entertaining him early is Smooth Roller, um, and, and that's if they go on a mission. Underneath. Um, uh, underneath, um, I would have to use Frosted. Huh. and uh, Tonalist. Um, honor Code, I'm a big fan. I just think the pace scenario in this race plays totally against him. Well, we are privileged and always thrilled to have the MIG with us. Champion jockey, grade one champion broadcaster. Always a tradition, always a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good luck today. We'll have fun.